Hey what's up guys, my name is Achano, welcome back to my Game Engine series. So last time we took a look at improving our Renderer 2D a bit, adding statistics so that we could see how long everything takes, check out that video if you haven't already, and today I thought that we would do something a little bit different. What we're going to do today is take a look at a game that someone has made, and we're going to both take a look at it in terms of like a stress test for our batch renderer, but also just in general to see how someone goes about making a game in Hazel, someone from the community, which is really, really cool. So you might remember from the last episode, I asked you guys to come up with some kind of stress test for the batch renderer, basically just some kind of test case scenario, something that we could use to actually assess the performance and the scalability, I guess, of our new batch renderer. So someone called Zero X has gone ahead and made a clone of this 80s game called Boulder Dash in Hazel and gone ahead and posted it to the Game Engine series channel on Discord. And with his permission, with his or her permission, we're gonna go ahead and actually both look at it and use it as a test case for Hazel's performance. And even though it's not particularly like a very, very, very heavy stress test or something that's designed to absolutely use every feature, I still think it's a really good indication of the general performance of the engine. And the way that this started was just with like a simple Boulder Dash clone that was, you know, not much of really a stress test. Cause again, when you're remaking an eighties game, Usually it's not gonna stress out it's not gonna stress out modern hardware or a modern engine. But then Zero X or Ox, maybe we'll just call maybe we'll just call them Ox from now on. Zero Zero <laughs> Ox has gone ahead and I Ox is it's definitely not Ox. Zero X is like at the beginning of like hexadecimal string. But anyway, whatever. So Zero X has gone ahead um and actually kind of just expanded the level and turned it into a stress test. I've just kind of been talking with him on Discord and that's what's happened. So first of all, if you guys are not on Discord, you're missing out. Link in the description below, thejournal.com slash Discord. This is all happening in the Game Engine series channel. If you're quick, you can just scroll up and you can see all of this taking place. You can just, you know, read that conversation and all of that stuff. And in fact, look at that. Zero, Zero X is posting right now that Hazel 2D is already uh, my favorite engine. So that's nice. I don't know if that's sarcasm because there is a winky face, but we'll just take it as it is. And the thing that I love about this particular example is it's not just a graphics stress test. This is like the whole game. It's, it's a clone of the game. So this is like, you know, I mean, there's animation, there's game logic, there's kind of, there's all of this stuff happening. There's even a little bit of like 80s style physics. All of this stuff is actually happening in this application. And I think that that's obviously a much better test than just like, you know, hey, let's draw as many quads as we can with no real logic, no real gameplay, nothing like that. That stuff's boring. So I really like this. Thank you to Zero X, of course, for making this clone. And I will, of course, leave a link in the description below to the GitHub repository that contains this Boulder Dash clone. So if you want to take a look and play this for yourself and just take a look at it, then you can of course do that. Okay, enough talking. Let's jump in and take a look at this Boulder Dash clone and take a look at Hazel's performance. Okay, so launching this, this is what we get. So with this little player here, you can see there's a bunch of animated sprites. We've got a fair few quads and textures and stuff like that on the screen. Let's go through this and try and play it. We can use the WASD keys here. We have these diamonds we can collect. I'm running this in release mode, by the way, just so that we can get an accurate performance kind of reading and the camera moves and we have these boulders crashing. All in all, I think it's a really cool little game demo thing. Uh, let's go over here, collect this. I really should be going a lot faster. I don't know why I'm taking my time. Um, I have to be honest with you guys, as someone who's relatively young, I have not played the original at all. So I, I, uh, yeah, this is completely just, this is, what's the word I'm looking for? Embarrassing? Oh, okay, I just died. That's embarrassing. I almost predicted that, predicted that. All right, let's quickly try and get through this and we'll try and get into the second level so I can show you guys what that looks like. Um, if you're quick enough, I did look up some videos of the original though, and I have to say that I think the original is a lot faster. You can move a lot faster, which probably makes it easier. But then again, maybe I just saw some weird video. Who knows? Let's just run past this. Um, let's get this. Again, I'm going very slowly here. Let's see if I can just accelerate a little bit. All right, let's go over here. All right, get this. I'm kind of worried about this because of course this could all crumble just by chance because there is a mechanic that I learned about where in this game, and I didn't know this because of course I haven't played the original, where you can just, you can just die because, oh no, I'm kind of stuck. Okay, I made it. Okay, let's go this way. All right, we're on level two. You can just die because um, every, like you can just randomly, this stuff can randomly collapse on you. 
So that's a bit bad. Like, that was just dumb. All right, escape restarts it. Uh, let's get the diamond and let's go over here. Anyway, you guys get the point. I'm not gonna, this isn't like a let's play, but um, <laughs> but if it was, let's kind of hide here. Oh, I'm dead, aren't I? I can't do anything. All right, that's dumb. I was gonna show you guys this enemy, but it seems that I can't. Oh, you can push boulders. I did not know that. All right, this thing kills you as well, as you can see. Okay, that's the idea. Let's take a little bit of a look at the performance. So if I just select one of these, uh, things here so that we pause the console you can see that the performance is pretty good like in release mode we're getting around it, it i mean it's quite sporadic because you know of course at this at this low of a of a millisecond count the frame rate is going to jump a lot uh even though we might only be like half a millisecond slower in a certain frame than another frame but you can see generally like we're, we're around 2000 fps half a millisecond i'd say is a pretty good average here we're getting a lot of frames that are a lot faster than that performance is great and we can't really easily compare this to what it was like with the old renderer because um well we deleted the old renderer and it it's also uses a slightly different api but I'm sure it would have been probably a little bit slower. I mean, again, there are not that many tiles going on here. There are not that many quads. So the draw calls aren't going to be slowing this down too much, I think. However, this is where the fun stress test comes in. So if we take a look at this stress test, this is a much larger level. You can see here is the level. It's just defined as a string here. Um, if we launch this, and you can see here that I'm launching it in debug. I just want to show you guys what debug looks like because I think that it's an, an important distinction to make here. So this is debug. You can see this level is huge. You can see our frame time is quite terrible. Six frames per second. It's running very, very slowly. Um, you can see the renderer 2D statistics here. So I've actually split this up into three draw calls. I was just playing around with this before. If we jump into renderer 2D, we can set that back to like 20,000. Um, because I just lowered this to 5,000 max quads, just so we could see if splitting it up into draw calls would make it any faster. But anyway, you can see that we're running at about six frames per second here. It's really not that great. Um, that's what debug mode looks like, but we do have this nice, big, beautiful level. Now, the problem is it's because we're running in debug mode. So if we change this to release mode and now we run it, it's going to be a lot faster. So this is running in release mode with I am GUI. And you can see that first of all, instead of six frames per second, we're on like 170 or so. Right, our frame time is like around five to seven milliseconds. It's super fast, but that's again, that's with I am GUI. I am GUI is actually taking about half of our frame time. If I, I, I made a little pre-processor macro here that I can just use. So if I actually turn off I am GUI by removing it and we recompile our code and we rerun our code, you'll see it's going to be a lot faster. So these are just generally important things I think that you should take into consideration when you try and test the performance of Hazel. 100% make sure you are running in release mode, debug mode test, especially with the amount of geometry that you're trying to render. If you are trying to render like over 5,000 or maybe even over 10,000 quads on the screen at once, it's really gonna slow down in debug mode. And we'll talk about why in just a minute, but make sure you're running in release mode. That's step one. And step two is you don't have to, but disabling IM GUI will definitely boost the performance. And IM GUI really is not a great indication because we're not going to be using IM GUI ever for distribution builds of Hazel. IM GUI is only ever gonna be used for tools and debugging. That kind of stuff in Hazel is going to use IM GUI. That's why we have IM GUI. Well, for now it's useful for just debugging and like quickly like adding buttons and sliders and stuff like that to the screen so we can manipulate variables. But in the future, like in Hazel Dev, for example, I'll show it on the screen now, we have a whole we have a whole level editor. And that whole kind of, well, it's more of like a model viewer at the moment, but that whole tool is built using IM GUI. And that's my kind of strategy for UI and for tools. Um, but for runtime, we are going to write our own UI library. We are gonna have our own like text rendering and all of that stuff. So IM GUI is kind of a temporary solution that you can use if you want UI in Hazel right now, but in the future that's gonna change and hopefully we're gonna write something that's gonna be a lot faster than IM GUI for the actual runtime UI that we end up doing. But in general, UI unfortunately does tend to be a little bit slow in game engines. Okay, so now that this is compiled, if we run it now, you'll see that the frame rate, the frame time is now down to about three or so milliseconds. We've even got some 2.8 here. 300 frames per second seems to be about the normal here. It's a lot faster without I am GUI. That's kind of the point. And let's maximize this and take a look. So here's the player in the top left corner. Everything is very tiny. We're actually rendering around 13,000 
quads in this. So it's again, not an amazing stress test. It's not like a hundred thousand. We could definitely squeeze a lot more out of this. It is running extremely fast though. 2.8, 2.9, you know, three milliseconds per frame. Gonna just ignore that for there. <laughs> um, you know, it's running very, very quickly. And like the FPS might seem low, like 300 versus 2000. But remember, FPS is not like a linear scale, whereas this is. So you should always look at milliseconds instead. Because one millisecond slower is going to end up being a lot more than like, you know, one unit, let's just say less FPS. Like it's not a great comparison because um, FPS tends to like exponentially get larger uh, when you get, you know, a little bit lower uh, towards the lower end of the millisecond frame times. So yeah, take a look at that. That's important. All right. So, and you can see there's animations going, there's game logic going, like it's, it's cool. And you know, there's someone chasing me here. Um, we've got the Hazel logo here, which is super cool. Uh, we have a little bit of a Hazel stress test, which is going to be nice. Now, I want to quickly talk about why it's so slow in debug mode, because I know that that's a question that a lot of people are going to have. Why exactly is it running so slowly in debug mode? Well, long story short, it's all the maths that we're doing. So we're using GLM for mathematics. And if you run GLM in debug mode, it's well, okay, I haven't tested this, but my very strong suspicion is that it's not using any kind of any kind of SIMD, right? Single instruction, multiple data. So what that means is like SSC and all those kind of CPU extensions that exist to actually use more than just your general kind of 32-bit floats. So you can basically end up packing packing a bunch of data, packing like four floats, four 32-bit floats into a 128-bit wide register, for example, and then actually multiplying them together. We're not gonna talk about SSE now, I just thought I'd give a general definition of what it actually is for those who have never heard of it. Basically, it is a CPU extension, we'll call it, that lets you perform operations on multiple pieces of data with a single instruction, hence the name single instruction multiple data. So what that means is instead of multiplying four floats with each other individually, you can actually pack them into a 128 bit wide register, well, two sets of them, and then multiply them with one CPU instruction. And it basically just makes everything a lot faster. Long story short, it basically makes your maths potentially four times faster, not necessarily, but potentially four times faster. So it's very, very good. Now, without any kind of optimization, maths, simple maths, like just multiplication and addition really falls apart, really falls apart. So if we jump back into here, we are now in debug mode. If I run this in debug mode, and this is how I can prove my theory. It's not really a theory, but we'll prove it anyway, just so that you guys are aware. And just because I thought this would be a good kind of test case, you can see we are getting 150 milliseconds per frame, ridiculous. So if we profile this, so we'll go debug um, performance profiler, CPU usage. Now note that Visual Studio is actually telling us that we're in debug mode. So we should switch to release for more accurate results, but we'll, we'll, we'll still profile it in, de in debug mode. It is still useful to profile things in debug mode, by the way, because you can see like what exactly is the problem in debug mode and what the slow parts are in debug mode. And also like a lot of the time it's very desirable to optimize debug mode because something like this is very difficult to test, but you still might want all of your asserts and all of your debug mode stuff. All right, we'll stop that. We'll look at this. And if we double click on, uh, let's double click on maybe bolder layer on update. Then we're taken to the code and we can actually see in red all of the hot parts. You can see that by far 64% of our, our time here is inside draw quad. Okay, so this is very red. It's, very, it's a very hot path, meaning that it takes up a lot of time. If we click on it over here to go into it and see what the problem is, you'll see that well, the biggest problem here is this kind of, just this multiplication operator. And we can see up here, GLM operator multiply. So this kind of operator here is taking up the most time by far. So this is something that really, really fades away in release mode. And the reason for that is because our compiler is able to optimize that code. It's able to use SSE and vectorization and it's able to, well, among other things, like a faster floating point model, we're not gonna get into like deep kind of optimizations, but the point is in release mode, maths becomes a lot faster. And that's obviously very important because we are doing a lot of maths. Over half of our time here is spent just adding numbers together. That is why this stuff is slow. If we were a little bit more like cache coherent, maybe this would be faster because we are kind of skipping. We're not exactly completely as like, you know, CPU cache, 
packed together as we could be. For example, the texture index is all the same for a lot of these, the tiling factors are all the same, the texture coordinates are all the same, you know, the colors are all the same, but we're still kind of having to process all of that data and retrieve more and more memory. And when you scale that up to like over 10,000 quads, that can also slow it down. So I'm sure if we rearranged the kind of the packing order and like we rearranged the memory layout of all of this so that our positions were all like, let's just say all in a row, meaning that when we had to write to position, we could just kind of do that easily. Then we, this would probably be a lot faster, this particular stage. But of course, OpenGL does need everything to be interleaved. We can't, we can pack like positions say into a separate vertex buffer and do that. That is actually possible. I haven't tried that. I've actually just, thought of that now. Um, we can try that. Um, if someone wants to try that, go ahead, post it in the Discord, and I'll take a look at it. But, you know, we are kind of limited by by a few things here. But the mo model of the story is super fast maths, release mode. That's why it's important to profile stuff in release mode. And in fact, as a little test, let's go ahead and jump into release. I'll launch release, uh, make sure it's running. It is running. What I really meant to do was actually go into debug performance profiler. And we're going to profile this in release mode just to see where the bottleneck is in release mode. So let's let it run for a little bit. Maybe we'll move around a bit. Um, and we'll hit stop collection here. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so what do we have here? Application run on update. So application run itself is like, you know, not taking up that much time. I mean, it's 60 something Hazel um, on update. I mean, look, it still is draw quad. Like this is still kind of the bottleneck. And this is now where it's like making me think that maybe it is more or less to do with our memory layout. And that's probably the next thing I would maybe look at optimizing. Um, we have this kind of 11%. So this kind of transform matrix, because we are doing a bunch of matrix multiplies here. Well, we're doing one matrix multiply to be fair, but that's kind of the biggest thing I think that's going on here. So this stuff isn't really that bad. We have a for loop here that goes through all of this and that's not too bad, I think. Um, but yeah, the, this kind of transform is is a little bit of a problem. And that's where I said, I think last episode that what you could do is since we're not drawing rotated quads at all, we don't have to do a matrix transform multiple, like we don't have to do a matrix multiplication here and create a bunch of matrices. Like it's a little bit of a waste because all, if we if all we want is position and scale, we don't need matrices at all. We can just bake that data immediately into the vertices for our um, for our quad without actually ever touching matrices. We can just, you know, multiply or add to work out scales and position offsets and all of that stuff. So switching to that would probably make this faster. This is just thoughts I'm giving out. I'm not going to go into this and attempt to make it faster. I don't think it's really that necessary. Um, like part of me wants to, but the other part of me thinks that like, Maybe when we actually get to the point where this is an issue, where someone actually makes a game and it, you know, it really does need an optimization, they can either optimize it themselves or I can think about actually getting it into Hazel. And I might, might play around with this, but just in general, I'm still happy with the code. I'm still happy with the performance the way it is. It would be better. It would be really good to get better debug performance. And I might look into that. Maybe we can compile, well, the GLM related code in like some kind of optimized format, even in debug mode, because it's not like we need to debug that. So we might enable like, you know, vectorization, SSC, that stuff for debug. Uh, that would probably speed stuff up as well as like, you know, inlining functions and all of that stuff. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. It was a little, something a little, a little bit different. Looking at what you guys have made in the community is always so much fun to me. And it makes me so happy to see people using Hazel. Um, we are going to like, with all of this in mind, I think we can proceed with, well, whatever we, we're going to proceed with. Whenever I look at stuff that the people have made as well, maybe it's worth me actually diving into the code base and taking a look at how this person has used Hazel to make this. Um, I think I will do that. If you guys want to see that in a video, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video just me looking at this code. And in fact, I'm not even going to look at the code until I see whether, in fact, I'll make a poll. There'll be a poll up here. Do you guys want to see a video of me going through this code and taking a look at it? Or would you rather just continue on and hurry up and get to the next episode of Hazel? Let me know. I'll leave a poll up there. Make sure that you vote. And 
if I do do that, I think I won't even take a look at the code before that video. So you guys can see me kind of my real thought process of looking at it for the first time and what my thoughts are on that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Patreon.com forward slash the channel, the best way to help support this series and my channel and everything that I do here. Um, Live streams are the best thing I think I'm doing on Patreon right now. There's one tomorrow morning. So in fact, I've been streaming pretty much every Friday morning. I've finally gotten better internet at home. So now my upload speed is like fantastic and I can stream in like really good quality. So I'm super excited about that. Um, the first stream with the new internet is happening tomorrow morning, as I mentioned. So check that out. If you're interested, you'll see me working on a Hazel Dev and I think I'm going to be implementing well, fairly soon I'm going to be implementing an ECS, I'm going to be in implementing Lua, I'm going to be improving the graphics with like ambient occlusion and all of that fun stuff and doing shadow mapping soon. If you're interested in that, then definitely head on over to Patreon, help support the series, you'll get access to the source code of what I'm writing as well as all of these live streams. So I think it's a really cool way to help support the community and help support me and everything. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.